four minutes on the net with Zach. Look at this musical picture. This is Deck speaking. It's Deck Klusky, the founder of the Serious Writers Guild, all those years ago in 1996. What have I got for you this week? Well, I want to talk to you about these little babies. I designed them myself, made them a long, long time ago, refined them over the years, and now members of the Serious Writers Guild are saying to me, well, I've told them about these little babies, but how do you make them? They're drum triggers. Putting onto the skin of the drum. It's a unique design. I tried all the commercial ones, the D drum, and all those type of very expensive triggers. And literally they all fell apart. Originally I'm a civil engineer. So of course making something like this, <laughs> no problem to me at all. So let's get to it. I'll show you how to make one of these. Even if you're not a drummer, you might like to have a set of these because I'm on stage all the time in concert and this is exactly what our drummer is required to use. I'll show you. Here we go. Before we start, why use drum triggers in the first place? Surely the sound of the drums is good enough? Well, let me tell you, I have spent the biggest part of my life touring all over the world. And believe me, you get into the concert hall and they hire in a drum kit, say in Australia, wherever, South Africa. And it's always a drum kit straight out of a shop. Always, for some unknown reason. Sounds awful. And I have spent hours and hours with the sound engineer and they put a bit of gaffer take on the, on the tom and oh, the, 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 the snare drum is ringing a bit. Can you do this? Can you do that? You sp two hours later, you're still at it trying to get a sound out of the drums. With these little babies, you just gaffer tape them onto the drum, yeah? And you style up on whatever you're using, say a D4, at least it's D4. We still use in our concert rig the original analog to digital triggers. And, and that's absolutely the best drum sound for our sort of act. Then you've got the D5. I still use a D5 in the studio, apart from all the other drum stuff I use. Uh, you can, and the D10, of course, is the latest. So. Any of those Elisis ones, oh, there's loads of other trigger systems around, but you can use them. And then you just say to the, put them on, say to the sound, sound engineer, okay, go for the drum check, and you just kick drum, boom, 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 dial it up on the Elisis, there it is, no problem, the best kick drums, 90 kick drums. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't find one of them that suits you, you're sad. And then snare the same, boom, boom, boom. There's the snare drum you want. Toms, boom, boom, boom. There's the toms that you want. Uh, the hi-hat, obviously you've got uh, live mics, maybe you have overheads as well. But our drum check, honestly, three minutes, top weight. And everybody around just can't believe it. And we get stunning sound. And the sounds that we use in the studio. You see? So... Simple, done deal. Let's get on with it. So here we are, ready to get going. Pop out to Maplin's or Radio Shack and get one of these, called a project box. I used to use bigger ones, plastic ones, where I found these metal ones are about the best. Drill a hole in the top using this bit of kit, which that's the only probably slightly expensive bit of kit in the whole thing. Get this from your studio suppliers, okay? And you, you drill a pilot hole first, pilot hole in there, and literally you just do that, twist it, and it will cut an exact hole, exactly the right size for the XLR. Put the XLR in the top. Where's the XLR? There we are, that XLR in there. If you want to use pop rivets, you can. I use pop rivets because they're so easy and so quick. You can drill and put little bolts in if you want. I did that in the past in earlier des designs. Then you need to get a piece of wood, cut a piece of wood, same width as this, like that, so that will fit on there. You have to drill and cut out a hole in there that's about the size of the pizza. Okay, you'll see that in a minute when I take this apart. Four little holes, guide, just so that you can screw that onto there, onto the holes that are provided on here. So let's um, take this baby apart and just show it to you. Take that apart, just take that gaff off. You put that gaffer on at the last minute, that's the last thing you put off. You take this off carefully, 
and this shows as well how easy they are to repair. Thing about commercial ones that you buy is you simply will not be able to repair them. So you take that apart like that. There we go. There's the four screws in there. Four screws like that. And that's the baby. Now the reason for the foam, that's the pizza. It's a different type of pizza. This is a more hard wearing one. Is a square of foam like that and I just put a dab of silicon on the bottom cut it to the right size to go in there. You can see what it's doing there. The thing about that is that it gives the pizza is now a little bit proud so that you got that flexibility there so that then when you gaffer tape it onto the drum that's how easy it goes back together. See that there? You gaffer tape that onto the drum it'll have an absolutely perfect perfect seal with the drum and it will work. So that's about it. That goes then into your triggering machine. It's a stage box probably if you're using a stage box or a multi-core. Back up to the sound desk, into the D4, then back into the sound desk. Great, great, great drum sounds. Everybody will be wondering how the heck do you do that? That's stunning. So there we go. Incidentally you can of course you use drum triggers. Uh, the, the ones are the, the Simmons drum type ones and uh, uh, Simmons still do do them, the, you know, the little pads, that's great. But this, you can put these onto acoustic drums. I always think acoustic drums looks so much better on the stage. So there we are, well over the four minutes this week. Sorry about that, but I'm sure you found this interesting. And listen, if you're a member of the Serious Writers Guild, you know you've got my phone number straight to my studio desk. So you can talk to me, ask me any question about these. There you go, get on with it. Let me know how you get on. Bye.